I've been a group fitness instructor since 1980. I'm an author, TV host, mom, wife, and dog mom. But I got sick and almost died from toxic mold exposure. I spent years researching alternative remedies instead of prescription drugs to cure myself, my husband, rocker Ted Nugent, and our son Rocco. I'll share what I've learned about healthy living and how to be happy in difficult times, some current events, and always end with something to make you smile. This is Simply Shemaine. Simply Shemaine is powered by Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless service provider. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Shemaine and welcome to Simply Shemaine. I wanted to bring you something that was upbeat and positive, but also informative and educational and healthy and happy. So today I'm super excited. My guest is none other than the American favorite legend, comedian, actor, and entrepreneur, George Lopez. So stay tuned for that interview. It'll make you laugh, I promise. But right now I, I just wanted to give you a little update. I'm gonna check in with my friend, Diana. Hey, Diana, how are you? Hey, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. So Diana, you have two kids and they're at home, learning at home. How's all that going? You know, it's really interesting. Um, one is 15, one is 14, one is 15, and their schooling is completely different. The 14 year old is working her tail off all day long, doesn't leave the computer. And then my son has a couple of classes a day in high school and then he's done. So it's just totally different worlds. How are your kids taking the quarantine, being at home? You know, I think the most frustrating thing for my daughter, especially being the social butterfly that she is, is that she can't have friends over. She can't do sleepovers. They can't go do stuff. They can't go to movies. Um, the boys just play on their electronics, Xbox and <laughs> all those things. So it doesn't really affect them as much, but it, they are ready to be able to get out of the house for sure. Do you find that you're doing more cooking and cleaning or is that yes. just I'm saving money in some places like gas and things nails, like that, but I feel like nails. the grocery bills, yeah, like no nails, no hair, yep. um, but the grocery bill <laughs> is by far. I know, right? Right. right? Well, I was asking uh, George Lopez, so you're going to see yes. our interview with George Lopez and he just got us laughing, but I asked him, um, what is the perfect time now that we're all quarantined? to in his mind in his opinion to start drinking margaritas so you'll have to stay tuned for that answer oh i can't wait a lot of margaritas and speaking of drinking margaritas cinco de mayo is here and did you know what the significance what the real meaning behind that is you know i'm probably going to make myself sound really silly but i think is it the mexican independence well i did have to google it i will tell you that but it's actually the celebration of the Mexican army's victory over France in 1861. Oh, so interesting. Share that, that interesting tidbit with you. Yes. Um, today in the show, we're also going to have a workout tip. Um, so stay tuned for that. Get your dancing shoes on. We're going to exercise something comfortable. And we're awesome. going to do that in every show. And we're also going to talk about tips on finding peace and calm during these anxious times. Do you find that you struggle with that at any time or do your kids, Diana? I think I definitely do. Um, just having to kind of work in all these moving parts that are going on at home that used to not all be going on at home. And I work from home too sometimes. So it's really hard to have kids doing school and me working and all of that in the same area. So it can get very stressful for sure. The commute, the commute might be a lot easier. Yeah. You, know, you go, you walk into a different room right. and it's great because, you know, a lot of people are doing these zoom calls and, you know, they might have pajamas on or like me, I've got, um, flip flops, right? <laughs> <laughs> you never know what I'm wearing on the bottom. It could be shorts. Well, it is interesting too. My kids have kicked me out of my office. So you'll notice that I'm in a bedroom setting because my daughter has taken my office. My son is in the kitchen doing his work. So I'm quarantined in my bedroom. <laughs> Whatever. Well, I'm excited about uh, this first show. So thank you for helping me kick it off. 
Yes. And we're going to be here every week. I'm super excited about it. And I hope you'll join me every week. Yes, I'd love to. Good. Awesome. All right, guys, stay tuned. Coming up next, my interview with George Lopez. Patriot Mobile was built on the values of Americans. We are humbled, recently achieving the highest customer satisfaction among all wireless providers. As America's only Christian conservative wireless service provider, you'll receive great performance and will donate a portion of every dollar earned to support your values. Try a wireless company that really cares about you and your values. Call us today, mention Shemaine, and get our best promotion. I am so excited because my guest, you know him, you love him. He's an American treasure. He's an actor, a comedian, a podcast host, and he's my friend. George, welcome, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. You know, for anything you want, I'm down. Same I love it. As well, I love you guys. I love it. Well, tell me how all of this quarantine has affected you and your life and your family. Well, the, the thing that's interesting is, you know, I um, had kidney disease my whole life and it went undetected and it should have gone detected at 18 because I was probably in the best physical condition I was. I played baseball in high school and, and in early April, uh, every player took a, a physical at school and they really checked your blood pressure and then you would did check your ears and your throat and the doctor there said, to me, I, I just turned eight, I was gonna turn 18. Hey man, uh, you know, your blood pressure is slightly high, like on borderline. And then he says, go out in the hall, sit there, come back in, did it again. It was a little bit better, but he said, you might wanna get checked because there's no really, no, no good reason why a young man like you should be, have slight hypertension. That was one of the symptoms of early kidney disease. And then through the twenties when I started working and I was exhausted because kidney disease is a, it's, Every disease is awful, but this one tricks you because fatigue is one of the major symptoms. And I just thought I was working a lot. I wasn't getting enough rest, but really my kidneys were slowly shutting down until the late nineties when a doctor did a full blood panel and told me that I would probably need a transplant before I was 45, I was 44 and I got one. So I don't think I've taken the best care of myself the first 10 years. But the last five years, I really have and drank more water and do all the things, salt and sugar. And also, you know, the audience, your audience and everybody knows that medicine now has um, uh, 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 side effects and the medicine has things that trigger you. Pre prednisone can make your face really big. It can You can gain a lot of weight in a short amount of time. Uh, it, it also can make you rage because it is a, a steroid. So all of those things in combination in the beginning affected me and then when I started to finally kind of get it to avoid sugar and I mean I come from a culture that puts salt on food before anybody's even tasted it the minute it hits the table they're going this is not enough for the you corporate <laughs> and my grandma I remember my grandmother going just like this over stuff so I think you can still eat healthy and have everything you like be good and early on they would say like, that doesn't taste like uh, meat, does it? And you're like, I don't know what this tastes like. But now with jackfruit, people who are vegetarians mm -hmm. and there's ways to it has, still eat meat and still be healthy and still enjoy all the things that you enjoy without feeling like you have to change your, your eating habits so dramatically that your quality of life suffers. That's not true. Are you a vegetarian? You know, no, I, I like meat. I don't eat a lot of meat, you know, because I learned that the, with the way the medicine affects me, I have to drink a lot of water, but I don't snack very much. And I don't eat and I don't eat um, three meals a day. Well, you know, they would say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I said, well, when you grow up poor, that memo hadn't gotten to us. <laughs> so, so a lot of times I would eat at school breakfast or um, not really understand that until until way later in life. Now you've taken, speaking of growing up poor, you've taken a lot of personal experiences and turned them into something positive and used them for your comedy routines. How can we do that now? You know, there, there's two, there's only really two yes and no. There's two decisions, do or don't. Mm -hmm. Day and night, be sad or be happy. 
Your husband and I have a tremendous connection between uh, uh, each other. And I was a, tr I still am a huge fan. All my buddies, I've taken them to see Ted and Ted's very gracious with them. He busts us up. We used to go and watch him here in LA and I saw him at the sports arena. And when I met him and he was on my talk show, immediately we became friends. And the laughter between two people who could not be more polar opposites politically, uh, but musically and him being from Detroit, me loving Detroit, it's not the differences that make us um, uh, divide, but the, but the things we have in common keeps us together. I love your husband, and I, and I listen to his music all the time, and I watch him on YouTube from the time that I was coming up because those are the best memories. So laughing, and we're going to lose people. My grandmother passed 10 years ago. I've always talked about her in my act, and, and being able to laugh at the things that she would say to me, like, Grandma, what was I like when I was growing up? And she said, uh, I wasn't paying attention. So that, that kind of stuff that is kind of like, I think all the, all the comedy that's really funny comes from truth. And, yeah. if, and if you're able to turn your pain into laughter, uh, I've been able to live a, quite a, a nice life doing that. Well, I love that. And now you're hosting a podcast. Right. Tell us about that. So, so the podcast became of, you know, knowing so many people. The talk show was great because at that time, uh, Ellen had started or she was already on, but I was getting people like Mark Harmon threw a football to 50 Cent. Your husband was on and shot an arrow over the audience and hit a guitar. Uh, I had Far East Movement, an Asian uh, rap, Justin Bieber's first talk show, mm -hmm. Janet Jackson. And the unity and the diversity of that talk show was not on late night. And in the podcast, the same thing is that people that I talk to and that I've become friends with that uh, are influential and have great stories. And, and then it's really just a conversation sitting around and having beers with the guys and everybody laughing. And, oh, wait, hang on. Let me tell you about this became what a podcast is just recorded. So yeah. to be able to, to do that and like zoom now, you and I, which is a brand new uh, format is uh, I'm not as self-conscious as I was in the beginning because to spend this time with you, to spend time with Ted, to be able to talk to my friends and to do business. There he is. Well, speaking of Ted, Lopez, how you doing, sir? News you never gotta go. <laughs> I'm telling you, do we share a spirit or what? How about, hey, George, I know you love me. I know you respect me, but what about this? Oh, man, listen, you, uh, you have, they call it kicking out of your coverage. You have always been the Motor City madman, but to see you in love, to see your family backstage, to see the girls and Rocco's awesome, to see uh, what you have, uh, we, we only saw you on stage, but to know you off stage and see you surrounded by loving people, um, it, it's, uh, it's really great to see that. Well, thank you for that. It is ubiquitous. You know, you've come back to celebrate. If it was just the music, that would be plenty because it's so powerful. I know it is because if I wasn't me, I would love the same music you love, <laughs> which I do. But you have to admit, my backstage stuff is so anti-presumptuous um, uh, rock and roll backstage. It really is. It's like a family gathering. It's like we have a good time and it's all positive energy and spirit regardless of political. Oh my gosh, look at you that. Know, and I know, I know you keep that handy, don't you? I play guitar and the, the thing yeah. that, the, a little bit, the thing, that's, the thing that's so great about this is it is bent because he used it on stage. This is game this is game worn, game used, and it's bent. And the only right there in the thumb, I was watching a YouTube thing of Stranglehold. This guy's showing a tutorial, and he said, "You know, the thing about Ted Nugent is he's got a great right hand. He, you know, he, he, he this is this is big, and that comes from Motown, the soul, the the heart, the beat, the hand, the you know, the, the little thing that you. That's not taught. If you know, Michael Jordan was a great basketball player, artists that are great artists, you would never say to somebody, hey, they need to use more red." But when a guy is just born with all of the talents that you can't teach, you can't teach that hand. That's, that's what makes someone go from great to iconic and never, never be forgotten. Well, well thank George, you. George, you don't have to watch somebody else play Stranglehold on YouTube. You can just call us anytime. I should, yeah. Hey, what, when, 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 when I first met him and after the show, we sat backstage and he had a towel in his hair. He had a towel on and a robe, and he had ice on his knees. And we started talking about Cal Jam, and I saw him at 
the sports arena and it got dark and all of a sudden you start here. We're looking around. Where is he? The light turns on. He's in his loincloth with a tail hanging, leaning back on this rack of speakers. I'm like, how's he going to get down? There's only one way to get down. Like he like, like propelled. He didn't, you know, some guys look down. They're like, they're like, where, where am I going to go? He threw himself chest first, like with the guitar, like just this way, ha, ah, you know. And even when he didn't stick the landing, he rolled over it and as like, hey, I meant to do that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed that because I had to have my knees replaced, both of my that's, knees replaced. But you have to awesome. admit when you when you witness, and I don't know if you got to see James Brown or Wilson Pickett or the fact George, I stood next to the Motown Funk Brothers on the. Cobo Hall stage when my band opened up for the Supremes in 1963, there is a certain out of body spirit that when you crave the soulfulness of those musicians, that you're, you literally, you have superpowers. And I know you feel it as a witness and a celebrant, but you have no idea what it's like to do it. It's, it's absolutely Bruce Lee on steroids. Oh. <laughs> well, Lopez, I'm glad you're, you're doing this with my wife, Shemaine. She was the motocross and swimming champion of Michigan in her youth, and she's my soulmate. So she I is. think you guys deserve each other. Thank you. Well, thank I, you. So I deserve, much. you know, it's great to have both of you in my life, truly. Yeah, it really is. And I'm so glad that you also have a connection with Rocco and you guys stay in touch from time right. to time. Um, so I got one more question for you. In your mind right now, in your opinion, with all the quarantine and everybody staying at home, what is the proper time of day to start drinking margaritas? 9.30. 9.30. Yeah. <laughs> you know, white people say it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. Mexicans say, hey, plug that blender in and let's go. Well, <laughs> let me take the kids to school first and I'll be right back. You know, since we were talking about health and stuff like that, you know, I opened some restaurants, uh, Mexican restaurants. And one of the things when, you know, they, when they say, well, you know, how, is, how have you been able to be successful so fast is, and Ted had some of the food from the restaurant that I grew up uh, eating in, which was great. And the thing now is, he, you know, he said, where can I find some great Mexican food? And I brought him the carrillos and all everybody was back there eating. But the thing with, with the food and is to appeal to everyone and not say, Hey man, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. You know, I make it real hot. And the, the success of the restaurants and the success of health, like we were talking about, Shemaine, is that it's good. It's good for everyone, and not anyone would be like, "Oh, I thought it was too hot." It has to appeal to everyone, and that's globally, universally, what uh, what ties people. And when you see a diverse audience, you see people that remain fans to one thing forty years. It's when you're able to make it great for everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah. how are you restaurants? doing i mean what's going on what's the future look like for you That's well I, you know it, we're, right now yeah i know it's, it's it's difficult it's difficult for them um you know the the because the, they're closed but my the, my partner's been very good to his staff and things like that but you know th this thing um uh, a friend of mine just lost his father of the of the virus so you know it it, it isn't it, it's that it's a global pandemic and 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 for this just little isolation time right now, we will live healthy for a long, long time after that, and we won't lose anybody because of it. I think this is a, a great opportunity if we can turn something into like this into an opportunity for us to all be healthier. Right. You know. You know, I, I I don't think I've had a month and a half to be home since I started doing stand up real on the road in '84. So my head is clear. I'm sleeping better. My head is down two sizes. I've lost a cup size in my chest and I feel better and I swim now. It's not like, nope, I heat the pool and nobody goes in there. I'm in there. And it's been, it's been because of the immune system. It's been, it's been, it's been great to get, to get to know myself when I'm not exhausted. Well, George, thank you so much for being here, for coming on the show. How can people find out more about you? GeorgeLopez.com on all the Instagram and all the Twitter stuff is, is that's it. So. And what about your foundation? GeorgeLopezFoundation.org. Kidney disease and uh, information. There was a guy that had a transplant who just had some internal bleeding and he 
went to the hospital last night. I have the lady that runs my foundation, Linda, at USC with him to make sure that he, he gets, you know, the proper care and the proper attention. He's by himself. So, and, and also that he's not by himself. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, George. Have a great day. Love you guys. Uh, we love you. God bless you. And keep making people laugh. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. Be safe. Live it up, George. Godspeed. Soon. Yes, sir. Bye. You know, there are a lot of things to be anxious about right now. So I wanted to give you five tips on overcoming overwhelm and anxiousness. Number one is to pray and to meditate. I find that, you know, the things that I can't control are the things that keep me up at night. And when I just let go and give it to God, those are the times when I find the greatest relief. And just meditating, meditating on where you are noticing the anxiety, the tension in your body. Sometimes it's in our head, our neck. Sometimes it could be in your throat, your chest, your stomach. Take a really deep breath. No, a really deep breath. Notice that tension and just let it go. Repeat that over and over. Pray about it. Ask God for guidance and ask God to take that tension, that anxiety from you and to give you some peace in your life. And then pray for the people in your family and your friends. And I find that when I do that more, I am less anxious. Number two is to do less. Yep, that's right. <laughs> do less. I find that now more than ever, I am so busy trying to juggle so many things. It seems like I'm cleaning and doing laundry and cooking now more than ever. But this is a great opportunity for us to just, you know, take stock of what's really important to us and to do less so we don't have so much to be anxious about. Number three, exercise more. Focus on your health. What are you going to have for dinner? When are those times when you snack the most? Think about that and plan ahead. Be prepared. Get instead of the chips and the salsa or the chips and the dip or the cookies and cakes and ice cream. Think about cutting up some vegetables and just having those around or nuts. I always have nuts handy because I do snack. I like to snack. I do like my Fritos, but everything in moderation and spend some time exercising, moving your body every day. When you start to feel those aches and pains coming up, stretch more, meditate more, and relax more. And number four is spend more time in nature. You know, as soon as we take a walk outside, it's like a whole new world opens, us for us, opens up for us. And we see and hear things that we and normally listening to the birds chirping and at night is when it's the loudest, listening to the crickets and the frogs. And it's like a symphony, a mother nature symphony. So take a walk on the wild side, take a walk in nature. And number five, the fifth tip to help you with anxiety and overwhelm is to distract yourself with positive books, of course, the Bible, but also positive TV shows like this and positive movies and things that you, you love and support and nurture. Distract yourself when you notice that you're getting anxious about something. I hope those tips have helped you. Stay tuned for a special word from our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. Patriot Mobile was built on the values of Americans. We are humbled recently achieving the highest customer satisfaction among all wireless providers. As America's only Christian conservative wireless service provider, you'll receive great performance and we'll donate a portion of every dollar earned to support your values. Try a wireless company that really cares about you and your values. Call us today, mention Shemaine, and get our best promotion. Let's
Let's start this workout by taking a nice deep breath. Inhale and exhale. And reaching one arm over to the side and the opposite side. Keeping those knees nice and soft. Abs pulled in tight. Another deep breath. Inhale. And nice arm circles, big arm circles. And let's stretch out the abdomen by twisting and then reaching up. And as we reach, we're tilting the pelvis. Notice I'm pivoting on that foot. And then more waist warm-ups. And let's do the other side and reach all the way up. Come on, use those fingers. Stretch, extend. Isn't that background gorgeous, guys? And twist, and let's punch the arms out. Nice big circles back, warming up the entire body. Inhale and exhale, flat back down. Round it up slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Press one shoulder down, flat back, and the other shoulder down. Hello to um, this person who is walking behind me. <laughs> I'm always wondering who's going to be walking behind me, so you might see me look over my shoulder. And speaking of shoulders, let's warm up the neck and round the back out. Now we're going to lunge to one side, we're going to get right into this. Here's what it's going to look like. You're lunging, lunging from one side to the other and do whatever you want with your arms. One more deep breath, inhale, shoulder rolls, and warming up the wrists and the ankles, preparing the body for what's to come. We got a nice workout. Hello, Miss Jogger. <laughs> and more waist twists. Again, deep breath, inhale, and exhale. I love stretching the low back. And clasp the hands together. Pull those hands up all the way as you bend forward. And again, roll up nice and slow. And some more shoulder rolls. All right, we're ready to go. So we're gonna start off by jogging in place. Nice and easy jog. Pick the knees up if you can. And we're going to lunge to do that lunge from one side, focusing on one side and alternating the arms in a perpendicular position. So we're using the quads, abs are pulled in tight, the belly button pulls in right to the backbone, suck it in to support that low back. Now let's take it on the other side. Alternating arms, that's just to keep you in the lunge. Remember to keep breathing. And shoulder rolls. Nice deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Okay, back to the running. Running in place, whatever you can do. Pick those knees up and you could even touch the heels behind you. Maybe touch those toes in front and back behind. And back in front again. Hello, people. Good morning. And it's so much harder running in the sand. <laughs> So if you want to take it um, at a beginner pace, just march in place, pick your knees up, whatever works for you. You know, pets are such a big part of my life. I mean, they make everything worthwhile. No matter what kind of day you've had, when you start petting your pet and hugging them, it just makes all the problems of the world go away. So I like to end the day, in case my dogs are like sleepy, I always end the day with watching a funny 
pet video. Check this one out. Oh my gosh, isn't that so cute? I love dancing dogs. Don't you love dancing dogs, Coco? And this one's my favorite. How about a head banging dog? I wonder what music it was listening to. Ted Nugent? Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Make sure you hug your pet today. Well, thanks so much for joining our first episode of Simply Shemaine. I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you. I pray for you. I do. I pray for your health, your peace. I prayed for this country and the world. Let's all stick together. Let's all love and support one another during these difficult times. I'd love to connect with you. I'm all over social media, so reach out to me and follow me. And I'd love to hear about what segments you'd like to see more of. More healthy living, more nutrition, more fitness, more happiness, more inspiration, more education. Let me know. Thanks again to Patriot Mobile. God bless you all. I'll see you next week. Bye.